Right, so Slaughterhouse Sports here. We're going to talk about Raiders and just a crazy amount of news that that transpired that happened in Raider land this week. Crazy amount of news. So, Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo did not fare well against uh, Detroit. He unfortunately has been through a lot of injuries. He unfortunately is not very fleet of foot. The arm strength is wavering. Um, and it looks like his best years are are far behind him, unfortunately, for Jimmy. And I like Jimmy as a person. I, I really like him as a leader. Um, intangibly, Jimmy Garoppolo is somebody you want to battle with and fight for. But with Josh McDaniels, this, this team outside of Garoppolo was lifeless. I mean, Josh Jacobs was really poor. The defense really didn't show a lot of teeth uh, with Patrick Ram. Uh, but Pat Graham's still going to be there with Antonio Pierce. And I totally could see why they made the move. They lost to Chicago. Uh, last year was a um, disappointing season for sure, um, losing a ton of games. And McDaniels came in on the hot seat. And then uh, losing to Detroit as well, uh, getting embarrassed. Um, you know, Josh McDaniels as a head coach, why it didn't work out, has trouble motivating players. Um, has trouble with actually has trouble with seeing quarterback has trouble actually you know with evaluating quarterback and evaluating offense actually putting his players in really really good positions to succeed he's just not good at CEOing his way around the defense was not good not playing inspired offensively they weren't even creating a lot of explosive plays so they weren't even great on any side of the ball and a lifeless, passionless um, existence. <laughs> that that that's what happened uh, in Raider Land uh, with the Raiders. So you go out there, and you and Antonio Pierce now is going to be the coach for the Raiders. And there's a lot of changes that are going to be made. But I'll talk about Antonio Pierce. So one, you could see there's a lot of Eagles stuff that is here. Um, I do live um, in Pennsylvania, you know, near Eagles territory, but I happen to be actually there right now. There's no giant stuff, but I happen to actually, you know, childhood and everything, watch the Giants fans and like the New York Giants. And Antonio Pierce was one of my all time favorite players um, because he was that linebacker. He was that leader. It was him, Strahan. It was uh, OCU Manura. Matthias Kiwanuka, um, Corey Webster, Sam Madison, Aaron Ross. I mean, that 2007 Giants team, Chase Blackburn, that that defense was so much fun. Uh, incredible passion. Antonio Pierce, I think he only played with the Giants maybe one or two seasons, but he left in, he left a lasting impact um, on me, on my life, but also all of Giants fans because he's an incredible leader. And I think that Giants fans would be lying. It's a tough spot if you're Brian Dable, you know, you're Canadian from Buffalo, and it's a tough spot. But honestly, a lot of Giants fans that are out there, they really do in their heart of hearts, and this is me. When I heard Antonio Pierce give a speech, I wanted to run through that wall like, I'm a little disappointed he's actually not the Giants head coach, um, even though he has zero coaching experience because he just brings incredible passion, incredible leadership, uh, some selflessness to the table. And I know that at Arizona State with Herm Edwards, it wasn't the smoothest of rides for Antonio Pierce, but I'm really excited about him. And whatever he does as a head coach is not going to remove the memories that Giants fans are going to have of him as a leader and a player. And he is the reason, he's a really big reason with his play and leadership why the Giants were able to win a world championship and Giants fans are forever indebted to him and that 2007 defense that they had there with Tom Coughlin and and really bringing about Eli Manning and really forging a career out for Eli Manning is because of guys on the defensive ball like Pierce and Eli Manning would tell you that as well so tr just being a Giants fan it's 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 really special it's it's like a family atmosphere and when you see guys from your own family being the Giants football family when you see them get opportunities like this um, it's really special and I'm really hoping that he can do great I'm really I'm really pumped for the for 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 a, first time in a while about this Raiders uh, coach and uh, Raiders team um, you know John Gruden and Mike Mayock you know John Gruden resembled what it was like to be a Raider as well they didn't win a lot of games over four years 
and um, and then the emails were released about John Gruden. And I mean, even in the time before he was let go, um, they didn't win a lot, you know, with John Gruden the second um, version of John Gruden. The first version, they were going to the Super Bowl and being very successful. And Jack Del Rio was there and um, was rocky and turbulent. And the Raiders team, I don't think that they've won a playoff game in 20 years. So um, for Antonio Pierce, he certainly has his work cut out for him. But now we're going to talk about the current version of the Raiders and of Antonio Pierce. So what Pierce can model his you know, coaching is he could be an elite CEO, and this can work. You look at Dan Campbell, you look at Mike Tomlin, there's coaches out there that are not coordinators. The new trendy way to go is the McVay tree. And the McVay tree is Zach Taylor, um, Matt LaFleur, and Matt LaFleur you're seeing without Aaron Rodgers. It's going to be more of a challenge. But really, Kevin O'Connell is a coach, and LaFleur. They have really good offenses. They know how to manage offense. Um, Nick Sirianni is more of an offensive guy, but a little bit of a CEO in that sense. But really... He's not from the McVay tree, but the McVay tree is really successful. Shane Waldron's a really good coach. That's a coordinator. Um, Liam Cohen's a good offensive coordinator at Kentucky. But really, what is it? It's Zach Taylor. It's LaFleur. Um, the Shanahan tree has Mike McDaniel. So clearly, everybody's looking towards those trees and getting offensive coaches. Right now, um, but you look at Dan Campbell. He came from the Sean Payton tree, but he was not. He was not an offensive guy. And Dan Campbell is one of the better coaches in this league. And he hired Ben Johnson, who's running offense very well. And and um, and uh, Glenn, their defensive coordinator there. I think it's Terry Glenn. I know Terry Glenn was maybe a wide receiver for the Patriots, but I think it's Terry Glenn. Um, is, is a good defensive coordinator. So can Antonio Pierce model himself kind of after Dan Campbell and after um, and after Mike Tomlin uh, in terms of being a tough, hard-nosed, Jim Harbaugh's the same way, or John Harbaugh. I think Antonio Pierce can inspire, and that's what Mike McDaniel did not do. I think that Antonio Pierce can coach linebackers and can coach defensive scheme very well. Antonio Pierce, he's got to be creative with his hiring. Um, and this year's kind of a tough situation. Um, but really, the Raiders have swung on a couple of these coaches. I mean, they fought that Gruden would in his first four years immediately. They paid Gruden a lot of money. And then they've also paid Josh McDaniels a ton of money. So they've always kind of, they went for the splashy hires. They've also tried to get Lane Kiffin out of college. The more splashy hire going forward, there's a there's a name that makes a ton of sense, right? Who kind of embodies the Raiders. And he's a big name. And I actually would caution that name. And that's Jim Harbaugh. Now, Jim Harbaugh at Michigan has turned that thing into an absolute juggernaut. All right. Undispic undisputedly, he has taken Michigan to a place that it wasn't with Brady Hoke. It wasn't with Rich Rod. They're they're out here winning Big Ten championships. They've won the last two Big Ten championships. Um, they've beaten Ohio State twice, which they haven't done in a while. He's going to be a name that's going to be floated out because he has interest in the NFL. He tries to get the Vikings job. But also, you have Connor Stallions. You have guys out there that are sign stealing. Now's a turbulent time where Jim Harbaugh can take his family to the desert and pivot um, from Michigan. I, I really think that Jim Harbaugh would be interested in this job. A couple of other names that are going to be very prevalent in this in this coaching cycle are, are really good coordinators. So Ben Johnson is, is, is really, he's the new offensive coordinator that's going to garner incredible interest. He it was from Carolina, but didn't really want that Tepper, Carolina Panthers job. The thing is about him He's doing a sensational job with Jared Goff, a sensational job with the development of Amon Ross St. Brown and, and Khalif Raymond and Josh Reynolds and Sam Laporta is a, a rookie, a uh, really creative play caller, great play caller, one of the best offensive guys in all of football. It seems like a really nice guy, seems like loyal, seems like he can motivate. Ben Johnson has everything you would want in, in a coach, so he's going to be competition for Antonio Pierce. Um then the final name out there that is really the big three that I see right now um, 
maybe big four, but the, but the other guy that, that is definitely going to be on the top of a lot of lists are the defensive coordinator of the Dallas Cowboys, a guy who was able to win an NFC championship and take the Atlanta Falcons to a lot of playoffs. That is a guy in Dan Quinn. And Dan Quinn went from a cover three guy, Seattle guy, to now blitzing a lot, four down front. He's shown a lot of versatility in his scheme. And I know that he has great players in Micah Parsons and um, good secondary players as well. But um, And Tank Lawrence, I guess you can say, Deron Bland. But he's elevated that defense to be the probably the best defense in the NFL, uh, at least a top three defense. So Dan Quinn, and he's shown he could be a really good coach, and I think the second version of Dan Quinn could be like Pete Carroll, actually. It could be really solid. Uh, but, but right now with the Raiders, it's turbulent. You know, they've had to fire coaches, you know, a lot. They haven't had a stable quarterback in, in, in a very, very long time. Aiden O'Connell really shows that potential. He shows a quarterback that can get the ball out of his hands. He shows a quarterback that has subtle pocket movement, that's tall, that delivers the ball, that can throw it down into the middle of the field. A guy that at 6'3", has good size and can throw and has a compact throwing motion, sees plays, um, not going to really extend at a really good level. But if you pair him with a good running game, if you move the pocket a little bit, he can really be, I think, an efficient pocket passer. I really like the move to go. Go with O'Connell. Garoppolo wasn't giving you a heck of a lot. And I'm rooting for Antonio Pierce. And Pierce is getting more of a runway than Rich Bisaccia. Because the thing is with Rich Bisaccia, like if Antonio Pierce and this team makes the playoffs this year, it's even more impressive considering the Chargers are, have, a, have a lot of talent now. Um, Rich Bisaccia had a quarterback in Derek Carr that was a really experienced, good veteran quarterback. Um, and Rich Bisaccia had better offensive line. This team has looked completely lackluster and uninspired. And the Raiders, actually, before Rich Bisaccia was took over, they were like had a winning record at the time or were around 500. This team is two games under 500. So, and Rich Bisaccia, it's just the way it is. I mean, he's a, de- he's a decent leader, good special teams coach, but Antonio Pierce carries the presence of being an elite NFL player. He's a household name to many. And the Raiders and Mark Davis, they've went out there and tried to always get the splashy higher. But really, if you invest in coordinators, you invest in strength and conditioning, and you, and you really invest in scouting department and those non-sexy things, I guess you can say, about a football organization, if Antonio Pierce can make this solid, can really rally this group, I really think Antonio Pierce then should maybe get a year or two of, of, of really being a head coach. So I'm rooting for him to do it. He's going to, have again, have to fend off the competition that we talked about. All right? Bo Hart agree. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll end this section, this, this uh, 15-minute discussion, talking about Bo Hart agree. He is a guy who comes from the Adam Gase tree. Okay? So uh, you, look at, uh, you look at Adam Gase. And um, not that good of a head coach, but a guy that does know some kind of schematics, just like McDaniel's does know offensive football. And um, he's worked with Mc, he's worked with Gase, he's worked with McDaniel. Now, will you see some more stretch run, a little more motion, get a little more funky and creative? It, it's certainly a possibility. It's a tough place to, you know, put yourself in as a guy. You know, has called a lot of plays, but it's also exciting. Okay, it's also exciting. You you retain Pat Graham. Um, as your uh, as the defensive coordinator, um, unlike the Colts team with Jeff Saturday was an interim. This team does happen to have Devontae Adams. It does happen to have Josh Jacobs, Max Crosby, Jacoby Myers, guys that have been successful um, in the past. Robert Spillane, who's veteran. So there's veteran leaders that are still on this team. Tyree Wilson does have potential. We got to see it unlocked, and um, and there we go. So. Champ Kelly's going to be taking over as well, but Bo Hardgree 
as an offensive coordinator, I'm really excited to see what he does. Uh, Adam Gase ran some motions as well. He spent time with the Jets. He spent time with McDaniels the last three years uh, in New England and now with the Raiders. He's been a solid quarterback coach. And um, it's a real opportunity for him. You see, you know, Dave Canales, who's a young offensive coordinator in Tampa Bay, doing a decent job. Bobby Slowick in uh, Houston, very young offensive coordinator, didn't call a lot of plays. Um, there, there's, there's young coordinators everywhere. Drew Pensing is a young offensive coordinator uh, in Arizona. You can do it and do it effectively. So rooting for the best for Antonio Pierce, I'm really excited about O'Connell. I think O'Connell can be a starter in this league, can function. The key is, of course, if he gets the the protection. But um, listen, if Goff and Kirk Cousins can operate, if you're an accurate quarterback, you get the ball out of your hands and you have good arm strength, you could find a way to be a productive quarterback still as a pocket passer. All right, guys, so let me know what you think of Antonio Pierce. What's he going to have to do to keep the job? I mean, I think he's going to have to win a playoff game. It's an uphill climb for Antonio Pierce, but clearly there's some, you know, big names that are out there. But, hey, get into the dance, win a playoff game. Let's see the Raiders. Let's see what they can do against the Giants starting off this week.